Okay, so now that you have seen how you can use copy location, copy rotation, and copy scale constraint using world space and local space, we're going to take a look at working with these type of constraints in a bit more detail. So the first thing that I want you to do is do shift C to place the 3D cursor in the center. Go ahead and zoom in. Now go ahead and click on this object and press the G key and move it to right about here. Now go ahead and zoom in, shift middle mouse button, and bring the 3D cursor, this object and this object, into view. Now if you take a look, take a look at this object, this object does not have a parent. So this object by default is operating in world space. If we click on uh, this object, this object has a parent. So this object is operating in a local space. Now when we click on this object, take a look at the location values. This object is showing how far it is away from the center of the 3D grid. When we click on this object, this object is showing how far it is away from its center using its own local coordinate system. So when we click on this object and do Alt G to reset its location, make them all zeros, this object will go to the center of the 3D grid. When we click on this object and do Alt G, it will go to its center using its own local coordinate system. Go ahead and click on this object, press the G key and move it back over here. Now we're going to do Shift A and add an empty plane axis. Now the reasoning for using empties over here is because empties can be used to create parent-child relationships or you can simply use them with constraints because they do not render in a blender. They're very powerful to use. Here I just want you to click on plane axis. Now because this object this empty has no parent, this empty is of course operating in world space, meaning that it's using the global coordinate system. Here you can see that the location is at a zero. What I want you to do is go ahead and click on this object, go to the constraints tab, and go ahead and add a copy location. Click on this eyedropper tool and click on the empty. Of course this object is going to go exactly where this empty is because this object is operating in world space. Both of them are because both of these objects have no parents. So when we click on this empty, press the G key to move, this cube is going to follow wherever the empty goes. Again, this is all just a numbers game, right? That's the idea behind constraints. We're just copying the location values into this object. Now, what I want to show you over here is that when a constraint is on, when you press the G key, you cannot move this object, right? But you can see that the numbers are changing. And as I've already shown you, if you don't want to change these numbers, if you accidentally press the G key on it, you should unlock this. So when you press the G key, it doesn't do anything, right? Now, what I want you to do is click on offset. So this object is going to jump back to exactly where it was, which is the same thing as not even having the location constraint on. Now, the reasoning behind this is because this object is in the center of the 3D grid. So there are really no numbers for this object to add on top of. That's the idea behind offset. So this is why it goes back to exactly where it was. Now the thing you need to understand about offset is that when you have it checked, when you press the G key, you can actually move this object. Now remember, when we are moving this object, we are really just changing how far it is away from the center of the 3D grid. That's what offset means. Okay? Now we can only change the object's location when we have offset on. Okay, so now you understand this concept. Okay? Now, what I want you to do is click on uh, this object, go ahead and do copy location and do the same thing. Click it. Now, we already know that this object is operating in local space, but here we have not specified this. Here we're telling Blender to forget the fact that this object is operating in local space and evaluate it in a world space. 
This is why this object is stamps to wherever this object is. That's what this does. So when we click on this empty, press the G key. If we move this, of course, the object is going to go wherever the empty goes, right? That's the idea behind this. Now, what I want you to look at is go ahead and turn this off. Notice that when we click on this object, it's showing that it's in the center of its own local coordinate system. Go ahead and turn this on. Now you've already seen that the way this object works when we click on offset, it's going to add simply the numbers that it has on top of the empty numbers. This is why it moves over here. Now when we click on this object and actually click on offset, this object is moving over here, but here we can see that the numbers are zero. So here, when you are forcing Blender to make this object operate in roll space, Blender is simply going to see where was this object in roll space to begin with and inject those numbers when you have the offset on, regardless of the fact that you don't see those numbers. Right, so those are hidden values. This is why it's appearing over here because we're operating in world space, okay? So go ahead and turn this off. Now, when we say that evaluate this object in a local space, now this makes a lot more sense, right? Because here, because this object is operating in local space, it's going to basically behave exactly the way this object does. So if you click on this uh, blue arrow and move it down on the Z axis, this object is going to move down on its z-axis in its own local coordinate system, right? So now because we're evaluating this in local space and when we click on offset, it's not going to do anything because now there are no numbers to add. But if we press the G key and actually offset it, now we've offset it and now it's adding on top of the numbers that it's getting from the world coordinate system into its own local space. That's what this is doing, right? If we click this off, now it's just doing whatever this object is doing in roll space and doing it in local space. But when we click on offset, it's adding those numbers on top of the numbers that it's getting from roll space into local space and adding them. So this is how this is working. Now, when we turn this off, we can see that exactly what we've done, right? When we move this object, we really nest it to the right. That's what offset is doing. Again, as I said, when you click on offset, it's all about how far the object is moving away from the center of the 3D grid. So in this object's case, it's talking about its own local coordinate system. Go ahead and uh, actually click on this object, do Alt-G to reset its location. Click over here, do Alt-G to reset its location. So the question is going to be that if we want to work with this object in a local space, how do we make this object travel wherever this object is? Meaning that we want it to behave as if it was in world space, but we want to use the local space. We have no other choice but to click on offset and press the G key and move this object to exactly where this object is, right? Now, when we click on the empty press the G key, you can see that what Blender is doing. It's working with two coordinate systems and making sure that these two objects are going to travel together because it's just a numbers game, right? There's really no other way to do this. Now, if you click on this object, you can see that what we've done is actually moved it from its local coordinate system all the way to the right. Now, actually, if you turn this off, you'll see that this is what we've done. When we turn it off, it just appears over here. When we turn it on, it appears over here because we have offset on, right? So now if we see turning it on or off means that you actually moved it from its center over here. That's all that's going on. So what I want you to do is go ahead and uh, click this and do Alt-G uh, on it to make it go back and just turn this off. So you can see that if we click on this object, just zoom out and move this object, press the G key to bring it over here right? This object is showing how far it is, has moved away from the center of the 3D grid. So when we click on this object, because it's operating in local space, it's going to do exactly what this object does in its local space. That's why it moves over here. Again, it's the same thing. If I move this over here, click this, I have to click on offset, press the G key and move it back. 
Now we can move this wherever we want to. Well, of course, if we click it and turn this off, then you'll see that what we've done, we simply just moved it to wherever this object was originally. That's all that's going on. Okay, so this is how this concept of offset works between world and a local space when you're working with constraints. Now, go ahead and now just reload this file. Now, having understood that concept of world space and local space, what we're going to do is take a look at this object and zoom in. Now, as I've already shown you, because this object has a parent, this object is going to only change these numbers in its local space. So when we press the G key, you can see how it's moving on its location, right? And of course, if we press the R key, it's rotating. And if we press the S key, it's going to scale. Now notice that when we click on uh, this parent, when we press the R key to move, the local coordinate system is going to go wherever the parent goes. It doesn't matter if you press the R key, if you press the G key, if you press the S key. It means that this object is not going to budge from its local coordinate system. See, these numbers will never change when you are moving the parent. So if I move this parent, put it over here, and press the R key to rotate, if you click it, you'll see that the numbers will always stay intact. This is how parent-child relationships work internally. So in order for the child to know exactly where the parent is, this child is going to use its local coordinate system to see where the parent is. This is why we can click on the child to move it. Okay. Again, this is just a marker. You're not going to see this in reality. We've just put it here. So what exactly does this mean when you're dealing with objects that are stuck in local space? So what I want you to do is click on this object and go to the constraints tab and do copy location. And over here, click it. Of course, this object is going to jump to wherever that object is because both objects are being evaluated in world space. Now, when we click on this object, press the R key, you'll see that both objects move. So I want you to go ahead and find that object again over here. Now, what we can do over here is click on offset, right? And again, this object is just going to move based on what the numbers it has. It's just going to add the numbers. So this is why it's shifting over here. So here we can just press the G key and move it wherever we want, okay? Now, what happens that if we say that evaluate the target in local space, okay? Now, it doesn't matter if this object is moving, just move it over here. Now, of course, this object is not going to do anything if we click on the parent and press the R key to rotate, press the G key, or press the S key. This is because this object is never going to budge when the parent is moving from its local coordinate system. So when you are doing a local space over here, this object is not getting any information. So we have no other choice but to do world space. Okay, now we can press the G key and move it over here. Now what I want to show you is that when we evaluate this in world space, when we press the R key, you can see that this object is moving. Okay, so it's just tagging along. So here what we can do is actually say that, okay, we don't want the X, uh, the Y and X values. Now just press the G key to move it over here. Now when we click on this object, press the R key, you'll notice that all this object does is goes up and down. So we can actually rotate this. It's just going to go up and down. Okay? So this is just showing you how you can uh, use the world space on an object that's stuck in local space. And here we would have to use offset. Okay? Now notice that when we click on the parent, press the R key to rotate, we don't really have control as to how much this object should move because it's using the world coordinate system. Now a way around this is that you can click over here and do limit location. Now again, we're going to have to evaluate this in world space. And all limit location is asking you along the X, Y, and Z coordinate system, how much is this object allowed to move? So if we come over here, minimum, and click this over here on the Z that it can't below, go below the value of a zero, meaning down under here. If we click this, press the R key and we move it down over here, you'll see that this object stops exactly on the global coordinate system where the X is, right? That's the idea behind a limit location. So if we want to have more control over this object as to how this object is moving, right, as to how it behaves, we can give this object 
a parent make it work in local Gordon system. So first go ahead and turn all these off and I want you to click on this object do alt G to put it in its center. Okay. Now the reason we're doing this is because we're going to do shift A and add an empty plane axis. Now we're going to create a parent child relationship. But do you see what's happening over here? Because we know that when a parent child relationship is created a snapshot of the center of the 3D grid is going to be handed off to the parent. But because everybody's in the center, we know that the local coordinate system will now travel exactly where the parent is. So if we click on this object, press the shift key down, click on this one, do control P and create that parent child relationship. When we click on the parent and move it over here, we can see that this object is showing exactly how far it is away from its local coordinate system. When you press the G key, you see it's exactly where the parent is. This is the power of parent-child relationship, but we have to do it in this way. Okay, so anyways, now over here, we can state, get rid of the offset. Here we can say that, okay, evaluate this object in world space, because that's the only way we can get its information when we're moving its uh, parent over here, right? But here we can say that now evaluate yourself in local space. And here we can switch to local space. Okay, now go ahead and turn these on. Now you'll see that when we click on this, we can move it anywhere that we want, right? Now here, I'm going to click this object, do Alt G to just reset its location so it's on zero. Okay, now notice that we don't have any offsets on. Now, when we click on this object, press the R key, you'll notice that this object is going to go up and down, but it's going to stop exactly where its local coordinate system is, the zero value. Okay, so this gives you an idea of how you can develop more complex rigging systems like this just on the object level without using bounce. So here you can see that what we've created is like a piston. Right? Now when we click on this object, we can also say that, okay, now since we have control over its local coordinate system, with this fan chart relationship, we can even come over here and increase this. We can say that this is how far you can move along the z-axis on the positive value. Now when we click on this, you'll see that it will only do this. Okay, or you can just turn it off. So you can see how you can develop these concepts like this. Now if we click on this object, press the shift key down, click on this one, we can do shift control c and do copy rotation so now when we rotate this object you're going to get a much more interesting rig that you can develop further and further okay now what i want you to notice over here is to, if we collapse this and bring up the display you can see that the relationship lines purpose is to show you the relationships between parent and child and when you're using constraints you can see these blue lines okay so what I want to point out here is that when you are developing uh, your rigs just on the object level using constraints, if you give this file to someone else to develop it further, of course they're going to have a difficult time understanding what you've done, right? There's really no way for Blender to show you what you've done with the constraints. You literally have to click on this object and create a picture in your mind as to what the artist has done. You have to understand it visually. So that's something that you should be aware of. Just imagine when we are creating our rig using the non-deformed bones, working with over 300 bones, that's going to get pretty complicated, right? So you will understand how the rig works, but if you give that file to someone else, they're going to have a difficult time understanding how your rig works. Anyways. Uh, here, just go ahead and uh, reload your file, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.